The basics of Swift are easy to learn, but the language has evolved significantly over the past few years. The more I use the language, the more I learn about it and discover its lesser known features. In this episode, I would like to share a handful of tips and patterns I have picked up over the years. They are easy to implement and have the potential to transform messy code into elegant readable code. In Swift, the condition of an if statement needs to evaluate to true or false, and that is why most developers use an if statement if they need to evaluate the value of a boolean. To make the code I write more readable, I sometimes use a switch statement instead of an if statement to evaluate the value of a boolean. Take a look at this example. We use an if statement to evaluate the value of is active. This is textbook Swift, right? In some scenarios, it is more convenient or easier on the eyes if you replace the if statement with a switch statement. The if statement is still my default for evaluating the value of a boolean, but I sometimes use a switch statement if I feel it improves the readability of the implementation. Give it a try, you may like it. Object literals have the tendency to clutter a project, and I am not only referring to string literals. We use number literals for animations, sizing and positioning views, and many other seemingly trivial use cases. The problem is that those number literals can introduce inconsistencies and code duplication. I would like to share two strategies for managing and reducing number literals in your project. The first option may seem odd at first. I use it frequently and it worked very well. In this example, we define the size and position of several subviews in code using SnapKit. SnapKit is a lightweight library for working with auto layout in code. We define the size and position of the views using number literals. You may notice that several number literals appear more than once. This isn't a major problem, but it is easy to avoid this problem. We create a private extension for the Billing View Controller class at the bottom of the file and define an enum with name layout. We create an enum for each view or collection of views we want to size and position. The enum defines one or more static properties of type CG float. We use these properties instead of number literals. The benefits are obvious. The implementation of the setup view method no longer contains number literals, and that makes the code you write more readable. Refactoring also becomes painless because you immediately see which values are used in several places. Autocompletion is another benefit you get for free. This technique is simple but surprisingly effective. The only drawback is that you need to write a few more lines of code. The second technique I would like to show you applies to number literals that are used in various unrelated places of the project. The duration of an animation is a common example. We often use the same duration for most animations in a project. And that means we use the same number literal in various unrelated places of the project. Keeping the values synchronized across the project can become tedious and prone to mistakes as the project grows. This is easy to resolve though. The first solution is simple. We create an extension for the time interval struct and define a static constant property animation duration of type time interval. We assign a value to the animation duration property and access the value through the time interval struct. You can optionally use an enum to namespace the static constant property to avoid naming collisions. As with the previous solution, code completion kicks in and you don't run the risk of making a typo. Another more advanced option is the use of an enum. We create an enum with name animation duration and define several cases, slow, normal and fast. The raw value of the enum is time interval. The code you write becomes more readable and typos are a thing of the past. Enums can't have stored properties, but they can have computed properties. This is a feature you should take advantage of whenever possible. Let's say we have an enum environment that defines three cases, development, staging and production. You could use the enum as is, but that isn't what I recommend. 
The enum should expose an API that makes it easy to work with the environment enum. We start simple by defining three computed properties of type bool, is development, is staging and is production. I usually define these computer properties when I need them. They make your code more readable and more concise. This is just a start though. We can define another computer property, base URL of type URL, that returns the base URL of the backend the application communicates with. This avoids code duplication and it makes sense to make the environment enum the owner of this information. The use of computer properties makes even more sense when you're working with an enum with associated values. The download state enum defines three cases, not downloaded, downloading and downloaded. The downloading case has an associated value of type float. It represents the progress of the download operation. It isn't elegant to compare enums using an if statement if the enum has cases with associated values. Without computer properties, your code can become messy very quickly. Computer properties resolve this problem elegantly. The solution requires a few additional lines of code since we are dealing with an enum with associated values. Enums and computer properties are a powerful combination and I recommend using them whenever it makes sense. Swift continues to evolve and I try to improve the code I write every single day. It is satisfying to clean up a complex piece of code, but it also improves the readability of the code you write and the maintainability of the project.